honestly, it's hard to believe that he's really gone. I mean, every morning I wake up or in the night, I wait to hear his voice. It's been quite different. I'm very used to having a very, very busy life with him, um, doing dressings and just being there with him. That not having him there is like, I lost a big part of me. So it's been really hard. And coming back into a life that I haven't been a part for the past two years, a lot of changes, a lot of getting used to, and it's trying to find what is there, what is our, my normal now. Some people have, have written to me comparing him to Terry Fox. I've told that to Jonathan once. I'm like, you're kind of like the Terry Fox of our days. And he was so humble that he was like, no, I'm not. But I'm like, look around you. You really are. I mean, he's my hero. In a different kind of way, he still managed to do kind of like Terry Fox's work. I mean, cancer affects everyone. Unfortunately, you know, everybody's affected. EB doesn't affect everyone, so it's a lot smaller. But the amount of people that know about EB now, it's, I mean, everybody in Canada knows about EB almost. You don't have any second thoughts about going to Minnesota. That's what Jonathan, I mean, he wanted to take the chance to have a normal life. Jonathan wanted to live. And we made, we had met, done many, many attempts to improve his quality of life before deciding to go through the BMT. And he was a big decision maker in his care at that point. I mean, he was, you know, old enough to, to be a big voice and he decided that that's what he wanted and I was going to help him get there and go through everything that he gone th he's gone through in the past two years. It was our biggest chance. I mean, I know in my heart that if we wouldn't have done that, he would have probably passed away a little while ago. He was quite sick before we left. And this, I mean, the BMT did work. I was leaving certain areas of his body uncovered, which I haven't done since he was very, very little. It did work. And I mean, the, and he was feeling so encouraged by it. I mean, you know, like he wanted to learn how to ride a bike. He wanted to, you know, just enjoy spending time with his dog, being able to walk, going back to school. You know, very typical things that we've always done. Most of us have had the opportunity to do without even thinking twice that it was a luxury, you know, but he, that's, he ha had so, such big aspirations for when he did get home. It's just, things really changed. How, how has Gibson adjusted to not having Jonathan here? He knows that his buddy's gone. He knows that something is different. I mean, he stiffed me. I'm sure he can smell him on me because I brought by the clothes that I had in Minnesota, so it probably smells like Jonathan because that was the clothes I had with me. Um, it's hard to, I mean, that was one of my biggest challenges when I got back home is to see Gibson because I knew that I was coming back and his buddy wasn't there. And Jonathan just wanted to see his dog. You drove back from Minnesota. Can you just tell us why you decided to do that? I needed those days to be able to cry if I wanted to, laugh if I wanted to, be able to talk to him, listen to music, or be angry that he left me and you know tell him that he wasn't supposed to leave, that we were supposed to get home together. Um, I knew that once I got back to Canada, I had to face everyone and not having him with me. And you had a small service for Jonathan last week. Yep, it was uh, very, very small. It was just for his immediate family. Um, no matter what, no, they hadn't seen him in a very long time. And it was just, that's what he would have wanted. Jonathan had two things that he really wanted to do when he got home, was to see his dog and have a little bit of a family gathering couldn't bring him to the family, but I brought the family to him.